Sports Wheels and Reels. I am Austin Horton. Thanks for joining me each and every week along with Jeff Miller, owner, Welcome. operator, and demigod of Mark Miller. <laughs> wow, that's a, little, that's a little far. Well, oh, sorry. Demigod goes first. <laughs> okay. There <laughs> go. Get now we got to figure it right out. Order. How are you, buddy? Good. Excited to have him back. It's week number two. Very excited. Uh, our, our audience can't see the things in front of us and around us, but... We're getting more and more professional every day. It's getting the pressures on all of a sudden. We're, no, we've our, got sound boards and countdown clocks and our, graphics. And, our production value is going through the roof. And uh, I actually already failed one of my jobs, so I'm going to start that uh, right <laughs> then. Uh, we have sports to talk about. We have wheels. We have reels. We're going to... Mix it up a little this mix week. Mix it up, yeah, the order of things we're talking about. Totally. Uh, because mostly... Um, no one really is all that too excited or optimistic to talk about the Jazz right out so of the gate. So we're going to make that last. Yeah, so we'll put them... When they start winning again, we'll make them They'll first. Be, yeah, I like that. That's how that goes. Starting tonight, right? Start in. tonight? Well, tonight... Well, uh, let's get back to tonight's it. Tonight's a fake game, really. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> all right. Let, but let's dive in and talk some, some cars, some wheels, Jeff. The auto show was in town uh, at the... Well, it used to be the Southtown Expo The Mountain Center. America Expo Center out Mountain in Sandy. America. And it was fun. It was fun to see all the cars, and most of the brands were there, not all of them. You didn't see the BMWs, you didn't see the Mercedes, some of those brands didn't bother to show up, but you had Toyota, you had Honda, you had Subaru, you had GM, you had Chevy, you had all those guys there. So it was fun to see, but my, I mean, my biggest takeaway from it is just how expensive cars are getting. It's crazy. I mean, you walk around and see some of those cars, and you see some of those big SUVs and Yukon yeah. starting with 80s and 90s. It's, oh. it's nuts. The official vehicles of Utah are becoming very expensive. I was going to say, <laughs> the ones that you see in every parking lot at the grocery store. Right? Around, I mean, that, yeah. those Yukon Denali's are 80, 90 grand now. And that's without airfare. I mean, that's, <laughs> that doesn't include, yeah. It, it, for and that, then you add gas on top of that. <laughs> and and the, way, yeah, the, way things gas, the way things are going with the gas. And that kind of leads into, dovetails into the surprise. At least it was a surprise for me. It was a surprise for me, and I should know these things being on the Subaru's national retailer board. They didn't even let no, you know. No, nobody knew. I don't think even our district manager knew until about two days before that they were going to, I'll throw the picture right behind us, of the brand new 2023 Subaru Solterra was there at the auto show in person, and it wasn't even roped off. People were getting in it, climbing in the back, treating it like an auto show car. Yeah, and this this was not one of those, uh, you know, patent inflatable tanks Solteras. Yeah, this, this was, was a real electric drivable Solterra. electric. It still was marked prototype, so it wasn't a 100% right. official car. It just gives them some leeway if they want to change some options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But it was fun to see. I mean, that's going to be a really cool car. The rumor we're hearing is the first week of February is when Subaru's going to open the order system on it. It was okay. supposed to be this week, but they've delayed it a little bit. So it'll be about a month-long order process to get orders in. Yeah. And my guess is we're going to have about 15 to 20 slots per store, is my guess. And so you'll, you'll go to Subaru.com and be able to pick our store. But if you really want to get on the list, get a hold of one of our product specialists, one of them here. If you'd any like of to. them. But you can really it get a hold of anybody. Have to be me. But get a hold of somebody at either one of our locations and get on the list, and we can actually enter you in. T we can actually put your order in for you on Subaru.com when we know that it actually comes out because we think spots are going to go pretty quick. Yeah, so you don't have to sit at home refreshing. The, the We'll do that for you. Yeah, and this car is actually going to be, should be on the ground May or June of this year. D as in delivered to Delivered us? to, on the ground, in our driveways. Oh, wow. And we're, they are going to also require us to keep one. So we're actually going to have sure. one in our SSLP loaner fleet. Oh. at each of our stores that we'll actually have. So we'll have it for test drives and loaning out to people, and it's going to be neat. And and in order to uh, rent that or, or have that loaned out to, there's a feat of strength that you have to go through. <laughs> uh, there's an alligator pit out back and, and, and all kinds right. of stuff. I don't stuff, know how so. we're going to deal with that, but we'll figure that out when it comes. One Tug problem at a time, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it was really exciting to have the Solterra on this, the ground It's going to be cool. Week. It's a full electric vehicle, 220-mile range. It's, and it, I don't think it's going to be crazy expensive. I mean... You talk about some of the cars, and we look, looked. In, I was talking to you before about the new Ford, the little sedan Mach Five or Mach E yeah, yeah, Ford. Yeah. It's Sixty-five thousand dollars. It's crazy. That's a lot. That's crazy. It's, it's good range, but sixty-five thousand. I think what Subaru's trying to do, and what Toyota's doing in the joint, is they're trying to build that same electric car, but they know that they could build a car with a three hundred mile range, a three hundred fifty mile range, but they don't want it to be a seventy, eighty thousand dollar car. Right. 
Because so not, yeah. I think the hope is we haven't seen pricing, so this is just me guessing. Is we're hoping this is going to be a forty, fifty thousand dollar car. And that hope is and guess is based on what you think Subaru's trying to do yeah. is deliver to the people an affordable, affordable electric car. Because if yeah. you anybody can make it get more, it's just put more batteries in. And the batteries are the expensive part. <laughs> right. Make it heavier and put more batteries in it. And if they do that, it's going to raise the price. And I, they th- I think that they're they were okay with a two hundred twenty mile range on a fully all wheel drive car. To try and keep it an affordable car. Yeah, I think it's beautiful, and I think it's going to be very popular. It already is popular. It doesn't even truly exist yet. Yeah, and we're going to work on we're starting to build our infrastructure. We're starting to look at how we put charging stations, more charging stations in at our store, create some partnerships with some local companies to be able to do charging stations in people's houses. Because really, if you buy one of these, you are going to need a level two charger in your yeah. house. Yeah. Using the thing that comes with it and plugging it in the wall. Not going to work. <laughs> It'll take about two days to charge. <laughs> so I think you're going to want that charger. But the, if you have a level two charger, it's six to eight hours. So you plug it in overnight, and you're good to go in the morning. For sure. So that was the exciting Subaru news at the auto show. And we'll get back into talking a little bit about prices in a moment. Uh-huh. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the legislative session that's going on. Uh, there was a, a representative, uh, Briscoe, uh, I'm sorry, Joel Briscoe of Salt Lake has a bill that he's sponsoring to make UTA ride uh, fares waive them all and make it completely free. So essentially using our state budget to subsidize public transportation. Right. Uh, And and they said that most of the uh, uh, revenues, nearly two-thirds of the revenue currently that UTA gets is from contract fares anyway. So like the University of Utah, every student gets to ride free. Well, it's not free. The U is paying paying for for it. Um, and so, so will those become free or will they stop the contract? That's, that's the question. <laughs> that, that is. But the, the history in other cities around the country and, frankly, the world, where they make public transportation free is not only ridership goes up, but then you see m- emissions and pollution go down. Okay. I just wanted to pick your brain on that. I'm, I'm of the opinion that it should be free. I think more people would use it, and we're in dire need of more people using it. Oh, absolutely. And, and with car prices rising, that's going to have to be a more viable option for people. I think the more that you can get people using public transportation, the better our air quality is going to be. And I think that that combined with a lot of other things can really help what, we see, what we've seen for the last week. Hopefully the storm last night cleared it out a little bit. Yeah. But that inversion, it's here to stay for a while until we can figure out how to get into more electric cars, how to get more people taking tracks, how to get more people taking buses here and there. My question, how much... I mean, I just don't know this because I haven't been in some of those cities, but in like southern Utah and some of those more rural cities, how much UTA services there down there? Uh, well, and that's a good question. In fact, part of this bill, uh, it, it does exclude those areas from the free. Which, right, is, right, which right. in my mind, just knowing how our state legislature works, that's pretty much going to be doomsday for the bill because yep. the, the power of the Utah state legislature is not in our cities. Yeah, and, and the fact that it So has the to... legislature is going to help yeah. are yeah. all of the Salt Lake – and main city legislatures who are actually would be the ones who'd want this. Yes. And they're the weakness. They have the weak power in our legislature. So You've heard it here. Our Salt Lake reps are weak. No, we're just kidding. That's not they, what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of them, too, so you're going to get me in trouble. We had, we had several in the studio last week. We just, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I think that public transportation should be and needs to be free. I don't know that it's going to kill UTA. It will kill the, from a revenue standpoint, but they're still going to get the money from the but, taxes. Yeah, and but the as you look and, and you look at ways to spend this huge surplus that we have, there's ways to do it where we can actually improve our people. environment. Yeah. So, you know, we have a huge surplus, and the first thing I, we always think is, "I just pay let's tax cuts, tax cuts, tax cuts." So how about we solve our problems? How about we give our teachers enough money to you know yeah. live? Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, that's how I look at that stuff, and I think this UTA thing, I, it's a good step. I don't the odds of it going through. I would put it at Low. a lower level than higher level. Yeah. This, this same rep, uh, Briscoe, did get one passed where on uh, mandatory air days, it is free in yeah. certain and areas. and I like that. I think there should be free That's days. start. It would be interesting to see how much on those free days it spiked. True. Like, I would yeah. love to see the data on how much those free days actually increase ridership of Front Runner and yeah. all that and making it more where you spot. And the other thing UTA needs is hopefully – they could get the ridership up is they need better east-west routes amen 
They need that's to be able to, if they could connect the east west to that central line that goes north south, yeah. I think it would really help. But it's going to take huge budget increases and hopefully stuff from the infrastructure bill and things like that can help with that. This is one of those topics where I'd love feedback from our listeners and viewers. So find us on all your social media platforms. Uh, the SWR podcast is, uh, is our name on Twitter. Facebook is the Sports Wheels and Reels podcast. Get at, get at us. Um, I'm at Austin Horton on Twitter. You're at Jeff Miller. I'm at, I just you changed, just it. changed M- it. Yeah, MMS Jeff Miller, I think. MMS Jeff Miller. We'll I'd love that. to hear <laughs> your thoughts on should UTA be government subsidized? Should it be free to, to ride UTA? Before we close out our wheels segment, though, Jeff, I was talking with you uh, before the show, and we both had a similar thought this morning about a topic to, br- to, to bring up. And that is, and we'll toot our own horn a little here, but it's not. It's it, it, it's more of a topic rather than a, an advertisement for us. Absolutely. We don't sell above MSRP. True. We don't, or Never. above sticker. as Never. As the modicon. So longer than, as long as I've been alive. It was one of my dad's things forever. It doesn't matter what the car is. It doesn't matter if it's a car we're going to get one of. And the market of it's twenty thousand dollars over sticker. We don't sell over sticker, and that's always been our mantra and what we do. And the funny thing is, you're right. You with the right now. If you go, my, we're trying to estimate it, but I, my guess is probably at least twenty five percent, twenty to twenty five percent of retailers just in this market are selling something or other over MSRP. Yeah, yeah. And the justification for it is our inventory short. We have to supply and demand. And the, it's actually become an ad mantra for a lot of stores. We've just done it forever, so we're not really advertising on the fact. But you're starting to see there's an ad behind us that shows you kind of what we're talking about. The Toyota of Seattle will not sell a vehicle over MSRP due to the lack of available inventory. And there's another one in Texas that basically said, our inventory supply issues are, shouldn't be your pricing issues. Yeah, right, right. Right. And the idea is, and I think you're seeing it in a lot of businesses, is this idea of using the excuse of, supply chain issues to raise prices arbitrarily yeah that we're going to, that i mean there was an article about coca-cola and pepsi okay the coca-cola and pepsi both raised prices and their margins so not their prices their margins how much they make price to cost are higher than they've ever been uh-huh interesting so they're not raising prices because their costs are going their costs are going up to the same percentage yeah. they're using it as a way to make more money and businesses are making record profits i saw the same thing about a uh, uh, a dollar Store, yeah, where dollar store is now a dollar twenty five. Right. Yeah. And I think that a lot of our business owners out there in the world are using this as an excuse to make more money versus true inflation. And yeah. inflation's being risen more than it should be because of businesses taking advantage of this versus I mean it, price the profits in the auto industry are all time high. Yeah. And it's be and they're doing it with no cars. And that doesn't make any sense is because everyone's selling cars over sticker or at sticker. And yeah. We're we're selling most of our cars. I think right now are a couple hundred dollars under sticker. Yep. Most of the things we sell right now. I mean, we're not going to sell a card invoice right now. That makes zero sense whatsoever. Yeah. But, but we're not going to go crazy either because we know that that customer is going to come back. And my worry to people, and this is my, our advice part of the show, <laughs> is be, get a pen, write this down. Be very careful buying a car over sticker. And I know a lot of it out there, and you really want that car and you need it, so you're going to go buy that car over sticker. But you got to understand is that this inventory shortage is temporary. And when that inventory flips and all of a sudden now everybody's got 60 day supplies on their lots again or in the domestic world, 90 day supplies on their lots again. If it gets back to that range, guess what? Cars are going to sell an invoice again. And guess what happens if you paid $5,000 or $10,000 over sticker? That money is down the drain overnight. The worry right now is the used car market is that everybody who paid over on sticker or they're paying... I mean, you right now, you go out, you look for a one-year-old car that's come back on the used car market, the certified, you're paying over, a lot of places, it's, it's over sticker, the original sticker for that used car. Right. And you pay that now, come August, September, there's, I think it was Goldman or someone was out there estimating that August, September, you're talking almost a 20 to 25% hit overnight in used car prices. <laughs> so you're talking a $30,000 car becoming worth 20, 22 grand overnight which means you just lost ten thousand dollars in value so yeah. be careful if you don't oh. try and find someone who's going to sell your car at a reasonable price it's a great time to buy a new car if you can yeah. find retailers that are going to sell your cars for sticker or a little bit under it's a great time to buy versus buying that one two-year-old used car yeah i mean that that has kind of flopped during this whole thing yeah it's a conversation that i have and all of us have every day with our customers is 
you feel for those that absolutely have an immediate need, cannot wait, and, and the market says that this is the price of the car, and we're still under sticker on that. We're still fair. But the best thing to do right now is to order a new car, wait, wait for it, and you'll get a, the, yes. the, the, the better economic decision if you can wait. Absolutely. Yeah. And be careful. And also, if you're if you're a customer out there that's in those dire situations, we we make special exceptions and try and find cars yes. and pull cars out of our loaner fleet for those special occasions where someone totals a vehicle and they have to have a car. Right. We'll figure out how to get you a car. Come see me. Call me. You can send me an email directly at jeffm at mmsubaru.com, and we'll see what we can do to help. I've done two or three of those in the last couple of months just where someone has to have a car. Yeah. And they and, can't wait. And that's your, that's, you do that stuff because your goal is to help people, but then those people come back. Their totally. neighbors come to us. Their family and, comes to us. And our goal, that's why we're not selling cars for five grand or server. Our goal is to sell you 15 cars. We're not ever in the one and done business. That's not how we've built this company over the last 50 years of Subaru and 80 plus years as a family. We do it to try and sell you multiple, multiple cars. Yep, for sure. All right, a uh, little out of order this week. There's our wheels segment. Any thoughts or, or complaints or comments you've got for us, follow us, like us, leave a, leave a comment, leave some feedback. We have a giveaway all the time going on on our socials and here on the show at the end of this show today. We'll be giving away some jazz tickets. So make sure you follow us all, all along the way here on Sports Wheels and Reels. When we come back, we're going to talk movies. movies. And I've got... I've got a family suggestion. I've got a date night suggestion. I have my thoughts, my homework. I did my I homework. Did his homework on Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up. Okay. And we'll see if Jeff agrees with my take on Don't Look Up. Okay. Be right back on Sports Wheels and Reels. My name is Sierra Hudson. I'm a wife, mom, business owner, and my Subaru is safety for my family. So my husband Colton and I have three beautiful little girls. We love adventures. There's just so much to do outside and we love being able to jump in our Subaru and just go. We've brought all three of our babies home from the hospital in our Subaru. So Subaru really is just a brand that's part of our family as well. My husband, he bought me, actually surprised me for Christmas in 2019 with a Subaru Ascent and that was just the best Christmas present ever. So this past winter, it was January, we decided to take a spontaneous trip to St. George. My husband just, he hit a black ice or just snow and we just started to slide. I was in the back seat and I was just making sure, kind of bracing for my kids to be safe. And, and it was just one of those moments where you truly feel helpless. We hit into the cement barrier and then rotated and hit a FedEx freight truck. And after we hit that truck, we spun again. The airbags had gone off and like everything was fine at that point. Our Subaru, you know, put its life on the line for us. And I just thought that was, it's, a, it's I know it's a car, but it means so much more to us and our family. So there's no other car I want to drive. Subaru is one of the safest brands. And you know, people can tell you that it has all the safety features, all the bells and whistles, but I personally lived that. I mean, we went through such a horrific accident and I can just attest that the Subaru truly is as safe as they say. The Ascent has Subaru eyesight and that is just an extra pair of eyes on the road, which I know I could use and I'm sure you other moms could use as well. So when we were looking to get another Subaru, the only place that I could trust was Mark Miller Subaru. At Mark Miller Subaru, they have their promised price program, which is when you go in, the price you see is the price you pay. They're not haggling you. I mean, their salespeople aren't even paid on commission. So you just feel so comfortable when you walk in the doors. And as a woman, I feel so, I just feel like I'm not being, you know, talked down to. It's just such a great overall experience. As a mom with three busy kids, I don't have the time to drop them off places. So it's so nice that I can bring them here when I'm getting services done, looking for a new car. They have a cafeteria, they have a kids play area, and it just makes the experience completely just relaxing, like it should be. I love Mark Miller Subaru and so many other people do too, but hey, don't take my word for it. Just Google them. I mean, you'll see how many positive reviews come up. Subaru is a brand you can trust, and Mark Miller Subaru is the local Utah retailer that you will love.
We're like Visa. We're everywhere you want to be, whether wow. you like it or not. That's solid. Yeah. yeah. You should get a sponsorship. Well, it's actually, f I don't know that I can share it. But at one point in my life, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Huh? I failed miserably. <laughs> uh, Some rough shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only rough shows. Uh, but that's for, uh, it's a different spin on one of my old stand-up jokes that I won't share here on yeah, this probably for the best. This family-friendly uh, show. Speaking of family friendly, let's talk some movies. Let's do it. Uh, everyone's favorite pastime, at least uh, whether uh, everyone does go to movies and watch movies. Most people are streaming nowadays. I still like the big screen experience at the local theaters. But you like the popcorn. What's the snacks? Oh, What's I the love snack situation. I love uh, Sour Patch Kids. Oh. I love Good and Plenty. Okay. Mike and Ike's are big with me. But always a tall, icy Coca-Cola and a salty, buttery popcorn. Extra yeah. butter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what they call butter. Yeah. I don't want real butter. Butter flavoring. I want that. You want the flavoring kind. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Like the butter. I'm with you. I'm with you. you. Sour Patch Kids, lobster. butter, and a Coke. <laughs> and some popcorn with the butter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, my family suggestion this week, family movie is one that seemingly everyone in the world is really in love with except me. Don't like it. Why don't you like it? Encanto, uh, and it's up here behind us. Uh, it, it, it's fine. The music is, is okay. I hear the music's really good. It gets stuck in your head. Isn't that that? That's the idea of Disney music. Yeah, and Lin-Manuel Miranda. On, let it go. Like, exactly. That's still stuck in my head from Moana, eight years ago. Uh, you know, all kinds of... Uh, Coco gets yeah. stuck in my head all the time. Those all, though, are so much better, I feel, than Encanto's music. Okay. And the storyline is really messy. Doesn't it's get really, together. it's just hard for me to stay engaged with that movie. That being said, I fully understand and accept that I'm an old grump. That this is probably an incredible <laughs> movie that I'm just sour grapes. Maybe over. you need to watch it again. Oh, I've watched it. How many times you watched it? I have a three-year-old. Oh, okay, you watched it a lot. <laughs> and a See. wife who uh, breaks movies down like a three-year-old. Like <laughs> Does the... your wife like it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife, do you know the show Bluey? The the little blue healer Australian I puppy don't. dog family? It's a cartoon. It's okay. fantastic. But my wife gets so into these ch children's shows that we'll turn it on to let the kid watch it. And she and I will be having to have a conversation and she'll like well, tell she's, me she's a she shushes me. You get shushed on kids' movies because she's so into like, Bluey. Because we usually put the kids' movies on, like we'll sit in the back, like check some emails, yeah, back. take a nap, yeah, something, yeah. But she's into it. She's all about it. So, but the family suggestion. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it already. But if you haven't, your family will enjoy Encanto. Encanto. Your family liked it. Yep. So my kids loved it. Uh, and then I just saw this movie last night. By accident, my wife... Uh, I have not seen this one yet. She found it on, on Netflix, gave it a shot, and it ended up... Honestly, it's maybe already in my top 20 movies ever. Ever? Ever. Wow. Ever. That's it a, was that good. That's a big list. Um, it up is, there with all those Nicolas Cage movies, right? Yeah, right. National <laughs> Treasure 1, 2, and 3. Is there a third one? Face Off. Oh, Face Off is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, For those of you who don't know, Austin is Wicker not... Man. He is not a Nicolas Ghost Cage Rider. fan. <laughs> Con Air, though. I like Con Air. Yeah. Who doesn't like Con Air? A lot of people, but oh, they're wrong. That's they sad. should. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is a rated R date night, by the way. It's on Netflix. It's called Long Story Short. It's an Australian comedy. What's the basis behind it? It is Groundhog Day, um, but with a new marriage. So the man, uh, it starts with their wedding, and then it fast forwards to the first morning of their honeymoon. Okay. And then he wakes up every day a year later on their anniversary. So he misses everything? Misses the whole year. But the next day. And his and life has fallen apart. And yeah. Whoa, interesting. It's hilarious. It's heart wrenching. Um, and it's honestly, it's got an incredible message that I, I may have shed a tear watching this last night. I like it. It was really good. I'm going to have to go watch that. Oh, that Long one sounds right short. up my alley. Yeah. Long story short. So it's in Netflix? Netflix. Netflix. Watch it for your date night. And then uh, I also caught this week Chris Farley, Comedic the comedy Gen genius. genius. It's the second A&E documentary on him. Yeah, I just happened to see it on YouTube. It's in full on YouTube. I got to tell you, anything Chris Farley, I'm in. Well, this is about his life. Which is sad. It is very, tragic. very sad and very tragic. Um, and it was a lot of it was chosen, but a lot of it was a demon that a lot of that a lot of people deal with. Yeah. And he was a human being 
who happened to be, <clears throat> excuse me, who happened to be really funny and really famous, but he was still a human and being. And held on a pedestal. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put on this pedestal. Way this too high. Comedy yeah. god. Yeah. Everybody wanted to do everything for him and help him and buy him things and buy him drugs and buy him alcohol. and Yeah. yeah a drink everywhere, six drinks everywhere he went. Oh, totally. Yeah. And he had this persona he had to keep up. And what I liked about... On top about, of that, right? I mean, exactly. he, had to, he had to keep that Chris Farley... Had to be on all oh, the time. Chris yeah. Farley, blah, blah, blah. Fat guy in a little coat. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Fat guy in a little coat. I'm, it brings me back to high school, so... This is a funny story. Quick Chris Farley side note. So it was our, my junior year of high school, and we always, when basketball team, we had to wear jackets on game days. So our coach, coach, school, coach, yeah. coach made us wear a jacket every day on game day. And we had this, there was a kid on the team, and I was really little then, too, when I was a junior. And we had another kid on the team who was like five, 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 six. He was our point guard, and really good, named Cody. And <laughs> so he had his jacket, and we have another guy on our team who's kind of a bigger guy. He's like 5'11", <laughs> like but a big guy. He's like our post guy. <laughs> and so he was screwing around the hallway, and he put on Cody's jacket. And he's doing the fat guy in little coat thing in the hallway and accidentally ripped his jacket oh, in Poor Cody. In the, back. the good news is those jackets are really inexpensive. Yeah. They're not. I don't know how nice it was. It one was. of those leather, uh, no, Leatherman, it, ja- Letterman jackets? No, it was like, oh, a, like, a, it was like a suit jacket. Like we had to wear a suit jacket oh, on like game a blazer. Days. We had to wear like a blazer and a tie so on. So really, days. like from that scene. So it was exactly from that scene. Oh, and I was he did the whole like scene. a team jacket. It was so funny though. Oh, and it's man. Like, but it's a memory that we've all have for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so I, I think it was worth it for the jacket. Well, what I liked about <laughs> this documentary was it, it is uh, Chris Farley has three brothers. Okay. One of them looks just like him. It's Kevin, right? I can't remember. I think it's I think Kevin, Kevin, yeah, because yeah. he, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, and then he, and then these two other brothers, all of them. So Kevin looks like him. Yeah, totally. The other one acts like him, and the third one thinks like him. And you can see, and you can just see, and they, they the documentary is them telling the story of Chris's life. Wow. At, at a bar, it, yeah. having some drinks and some food, and they. Order they over order in honor of oh, Chris. Chris. <laughs> uh, it's really Bill Murray's uh, brother Joel Murray. What's your favorite Chris Farley and, skit ever? Um, a lot of people would probably say Chippendales or Matt Foley. I, uh, like, I like the Bears. Oh yeah, the Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the chicken wings. Yeah, and the buffalo wings. <laughs> um, I liked. There's one that a lot of people never saw. He was a figure skater at the Olympics. <laughs> And it was really him skating. That's so funny. It was really Van really by fun. D- Van down by the river. Yeah, that's the Matt Foley yeah. and motivational and speaker. Van yeah. down by the river. <laughs> so, if you're a Chris Farley fan, uh, check that out. I I found it on YouTube in its entirety, ad free. So, now should we get to the homework? Let's, Let's get, get to, to the your homework. homework. Last week, you told me I had to go watch. Don't look up. Don't look up. Leo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, a bunch of other people. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill was excellent in it. The most overrated actress of all time, Meryl Streep. What? Just by definition. Like, I don't think she's terrible. I just think she's overrated. She's the GOAT. (laughs) Well, that's that's why a lot of people will say that about the Beatles. They're the greatest of all time. That means they're overrated. You heard that. So all the actors in this thing, there's a funny story about the GOAT as part of this movie. And they all, like, literally two of them, I think Jonah Hill said it. And Jennifer Lawrence said it like on Kimmel or something like that. And they're basically talking about they went around the set the whole time they're filming it. And for the first like month of the set, they're calling Meryl Streep goat. <laughs> and she has no idea what it means. Oh, really? <laughs> so she's just like, well, I just feel like they're calling me like the old goat. <laughs> the old goat on set. She's taking it politely but as an insult. <laughs> yeah. And be Meryl Streep, like really nice Meryl Streep. She's like, yeah, I just figured they were just... She does have that rep. like the gold, like the, yeah. like, a, like the ice old goat on set and they finally told her, no, you're the greatest of all time. I finally That's figured funny. it out. But like both of them... Like, That's so good. So funny. She has that rep of being humble. Totally. And, and oh, totally. Uh, and I don't mean that she's a bad actress. I just think she's overrated. But she was great in this. She was great. Fantastic. Playing the conservative president. Yeah. So tell me what you thought. So tell me the overall, your overall view on it. So it's it's heavy-handed with its politics, which it had to be and should be. That was its point. And I may or may not, I do, agree with the politics <laughs> that were being shared. Uh, not, well, the, not the ones that were being mocked, no. but that's a different conversation. I'd give this movie probably a B minus okay. just because I think C plus is too harsh. It's worth seeing just for Jonah Hill alone, though. I think he was freaking funny. I think it's one of those movies. It's entertaining. It's a great movie. It's a cool message, everything like that. It's not one you'd buy and watch over and over. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a little below Leo DiCaprio, honestly. Yeah, he plays a really interesting character. He's yeah. like not like the heartthrob like guy. He's just this like weird old dad. <laughs> I, what I mean by that is, I mean he plays the character great. He plays him great. I just, it's a little low quality for his line yeah. of. I thought Jennifer acting. Lawrence was great though too. She's t- she's fantastic. She's terrific in it. I've loved her in everything she's done. Yeah. Back to the Bill Engvall show days. Uh, so I did my homework. I watched. Don't look up. A B minus. Worth only, watching. Yeah. Worth watching. You got to watch Probably it at least watch once. Watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. But Jonah Hill was really funny in, in it as well. Now, I gave you homework, and I can't remember what it was, which probably means you didn't remember to do I it. I definitely didn't remember. Which we'll to have do it. to go back and watch we're, the We're going to go back and watch the tape. We have these all recorded. So <laughs> now we can go back and see it. If anybody listening can send us a message that remembers what my homework was, I'll get it done for next week. <laughs> I also wanted to do something fun. If you're, if you're ever watching a movie in the Mark Miller. Subaru Lounge yeah. at Megaplex. Send us a selfie. Yeah. Send us a, send us a picture. Yeah, tag us on tw- Twitter. So maybe we'll enter you in and give you a special prize or something, get some movie passes or something. Yeah, it's just a great way to take in a flick. And yeah. uh, I love all the Megaplex theaters, but we have such great movie theaters regardless of brand here in the Valley. This is a great Valley for movie theaters. Yep. And they're still not crazy busy yeah for sure yeah they so, could use some they could use some business for sure head on out and enjoy some movies if you're staying home though family night in canto date night uh i'm definitely watching count. long story short long story short i need you to watch that, that that's my homework this week yep one at least one of them all right we're gonna take our second break here on sports wheels and reels when we come back everyone go you know take a deep breath yeah. we're gonna do talk some about meditation the jazz we're gonna talk about the utah jazz or have they how they've been playing lately the Utah as if you get what I'm saying oh, there. Man. Bah, 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 bah. Man, that's bad. Be right back <laughs> unless we're canceled. My name's Jamie Usry and I am a dog mom, a human mom, a wife, a member of the LGBTQ plus community, an animal advocate, and my Subaru is Freedom. I've had so many animals over the years, several dozen dogs and cats. One of the things that I love about Mark Miller Subaru is is they're the largest animal welfare supporter that I've ever met in the Salt Lake Valley. The dogs definitely enjoy the Subarus. I think it's a little more comfortable than some cars we've had in the past. One of the main reasons that I decided to purchase my two Subarus from Mark Miller Subaru is safety. Keeping all my little creatures safe is important to me and Forrester and the Ascent that I have are both highly rated. You know, it's kind of this combination of a safe car, a nice looking car, but also a very convenient dog owning and and kid owning car as well. It's hard to leave the house to come have something done like an oil change or, or a rock chip repair. And so they come to me, Mark Miller Subaru comes out, picks up my car, brings it here to have a service and drops it back off and you just couldn't ask for anything better when you're a busy mom like I am. When I knew I was gonna buy Subarus, one of the reasons that I trusted Mark Miller Subaru so much is not just what they do for animals in the community, but uh, what they do for our LGBTQ plus community here in Utah. They're one of the longest supporters of the LGBTQ plus community. I feel as a person involved in that community that they are someone that that I can come to and, and will give me a good deal and respect me as a person and treat me right and my family right and my wife and I, our daughter Harper and our dogs, we're just so happy that we picked Mark Miller Subaru. You may not even realize it, but through Mark Miller Subaru's Love Promise program, they're probably supporting a nonprofit that you love in the community. In the past 10 years, they've donated nearly $3 million across Utah to charities that we all love and support. Subaru is a brand that I trust and Mark Miller Subaru is the local retailer that I love. Welcome back, Sports Wheels and Reels, our final segment this week on episode numero dos. Sports. Let's get to it. Let's get it over with. You're the pessimist. I'm the optimist. It's going to be a good back and forth here. It's, yeah, good is probably not a word I'd use to describe this team right now. Should we start with the Jazz? Let's start with them. I am, (laughs) for realsies, panicking about the Utah Jazz. I am. I think that they are a, a paper tiger at best. Right now. Okay, so without Gobert, yes. So they lost all their games without uh, Gobert. Right, with Gobert. Okay, so they lost all their games good and everyone else is team, terrible. Team comes back. They had a great win in Denver. Yeah. You have to say yeah. that, right? Yep. A great win yep. in Denver. Came back, played that game against the Lakers. Yep. 
that's where ice cold. I mean, you're talking about frozen ice cold. Donovan actually played the second half of the full concussion, which he which shouldn't, he shouldn't have, have which they didn't notice he had a concussion, which may, explains why he couldn't make a shot in the second half because <laughs> well, yeah. he was concussed. <laughs> yeah. Then they played the last the last game they played. They played in Houston, and my personal opinion on that Houston game, I watched the entire game. They were screwing around. They were trying. They were trying things out on defense. And yep. Locks mentioned this, and a bunch of other guys mentioned this. They were testing stuff on this five out. They knew they were playing against a five out, no center team. Right. They were going to test some stuff, and it was that's why Eric Pascal didn't play. Everyone's crazy about Eric Pascal didn't play. Why they play Doke? Because they wanted to try this five out when Whiteside comes by and test these things out. Yeah. It, it was a test game, and they lost it. They figured they could screw with Houston and win, even doing this. And Houston got hot, <laughs> and they made. 50% of their threes or something like that. Yeah, Christian Wood was terrific. Yeah. And it's middle of the season. I mean, if you listen to Locke this morning, he talks about it's, it's the dredges of the season. It's the middle of the season where everyone's trying to figure out, and everybody's worried about getting traded. Okay. You, I think you've got Jordan Clarkson and Joe Ingles both in really bad places. Yeah. I think Jordan Clarkson thinks he's getting traded, which could probably be true. Yeah. But he is in a very bad place. I mean, you look at his body language. You look at him sitting on the bench. You look at him, like, during timeouts. He's not engaged. Look at the last half a season of games. Actually, a year and a half of games yeah, for he, Jordan Clarkson. He is just not engaged in the team. And he gets out there, and he does his own thing. And it's outside what the team needs him to do. And if he can get back to what won him sixth man of the year last year, he's a useful guy to this team. If he wants to keep doing what he's doing now, which is – just going one on one and staying outside where he's good is when he drives to the hoop and dumps. When he drives to the hoop and kicks out. When he his, he gets so much gravity to him, but the gravity's there because guess what? They know he's not going to pass it. Yeah. They know he's just going to go up and throw a hook shot up or go to the hoop. And he has games where they go in, his games they don't. But yeah. we can't live on that. Well, all these things kind of point to what I am saying as well is that contenders don't have players feeling like they're going to be traded, especially players that are major contributors that just won six man of the year. Contenders don't have mess around games against the lower teams in so the here, league. Here's what we did this Contenders week. don't lose six of seven with a defensive rating of 117, 26th in the league. Okay, but four of those you played without a center. You're still a contender if, if you're still a contender. But you're, you're, not a contend- win those. but you're not a contender without Rudy Gobert. Just and, like, and I don't believe they are with him right now. Just like the Suns are a contender without Chris Paul. You think so? You Chris think Paul goes out Chris of that Paul? game, that team's toast. Well, that'll be interesting because we'll get to see them play Phoenix oh, twice. Twice this week. This yeah, look week. at this week. Here's the upcoming week schedule. So we got Detroit tonight, which you call a throwaway game, but they, they beat us pretty good at, an, <laughs> well, <laughs> at and, the Detroit. But and you're Hassan playing without anybody. and Donovan are probably both out tonight. So Totally. And Jeremy Grant is out. Jeremy Detroit. Grant's out for them. They're preparing him for his next his trade. <laughs> He's been playing in the G League after thumb surgery. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting ready for his trade. He's going somewhere. It's a matter of where. Would you trade for him? Well, I was going to say, if he were playing tonight, you might get a preview of next week's Jazz team. Bogey and Clarkson <laughs> for Grant? No. I would not trade Bogdanovich. I would just make him – I would fine him $5,000 per dribble. Clarkson – That's what I would do with Bogey Clarkson and, and Ingles. Yeah. But why would Detroit do that? Grant. And Detroit is probably going to get, I think, two firsts for Jeremy no, Grant. We don't have any firsts. The Jazz don't have any firsts. We'll maybe give him one. <laughs> yeah, but it will be yeah. in the 20s. Uh, so I think, I mean, there's got to be a trade made. You've got to assume there's going to be some kind of shakeup. But a lock, the funny thing about the NBA is memories are short. Yeah. A lot can happen in a week. You see, I mean, and then we'll have a good conversation because here's the schedule next week. You got Detroit tonight, then you got at Golden State, at Phoenix on a back to back, and then Phoenix at home on Wednesday. And don't discount Memphis next Friday. Yeah, that'll be after our show next Friday. So we'll talk about that again. But you get Donovan back, you get Whiteside back, you get a full roster back. Jazz go three and one in these games. Is all right in the world? If they go three and one in these games and it's against a full complement, Golden State, full complement. Golden Golden State's not going to have Draymond. Well,. Okay, but that's I can forgive. They that, lost the Pacers think. last night without anybody, without Levert, yeah, without Brogdon, yeah, without Miles Turner. I saw Steph saying no one's panicking there. Yeah, and they but, they shouldn't be. No, and I I go back to a lock. The Jazz said, should be. I go back to what Locke <laughs> said this morning, and he's just like, it's the same thing. Should you guys all be? The, it's the same thing that they lost a couple games. Yeah, but, but they're them. They're five and six since 
in the last 11 games. I don't feel like they're so utter, or, or not utterless, rudderless as I feel the Jazz are right That's now. That's because of the There's media. Fractures it's because of no, all, and Twitter and all that. the crap. Listen, Penny Hardaway, the media is not <laughs> the problem here. The problem is that you've got Stars that don't see eye to eye. I think that's blown out of proportion. And new ownership, as much as I respect them, these things take time to meld, and the Jazz don't have that time. And but that be said, if they go three and one, that time. What, what's if, their record right now? Well, I mean, Donovan's contract is counting down here. They're that's forty-three. What I mean. They're halfway through the season. We got 39, 30, 41 games left. If they to get go, things right, we're fine. If, if we go two and two fine. this week, we're okay. At, at some point, that we're fine thing becomes that dog with the fire around him drinking his coffee. Everything's fine. I I am not as worried as you are. No, you're not, and you should be. I think we still have. Don't look up, Jeff. <laughs> we still have two of the top twenty players in the NBA, and you could argue three of the top thirty players in the NBA. Oh yeah, I could. Yeah, I could. And what with team that. has three of the top thirty players? You're you're okay. And Bogey, and, and you could argue Bogey's a top sixty player. Oh, I think he is when he doesn't dribble. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty good. If they go three and one against, you know, pretty much full teams, three and one would be a m- awesome. Then I'll sit here next Friday and tell you that they are contenders. What do I get if they go four and out? Well, we won't know that till next Saturday, right? No, because oh, tonight, including da- tonight's including game, including Detroit. Yeah, if they lose to Detroit, then I don't know. If they lose to Detroit, what do I get? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the Jazz. They they have me worried. I feel like they should be a little more worried. I think it's way too early in the season to panic. When is it okay to panic? Well, what what was it? Two years ago, three years ago, when they were they finished twenty five and nine or whatever. When they and when four. they won like twenty five out of twenty six games Ricky or something Rubio like that. Yeah, played, like well, it looked like the Jazz. They had a losing record. They were like seventeen and twenty, and then all of a sudden they rolled off twenty five out of twenty seven or something. Yeah, yeah, that stuff happens in the NBA. And you get a full complement of players, and the Jazz with a full complement are ten and three. And the three games yeah. they lost with that full complement, they lost by a total of four points. Four. Well, okay, so the talent, is, the talent is definitely there. The talent is there. What do you feel about, uh, you, you, you say a full complement, and I do think the capabilities talent-wise are, is theirs. It's tangible. You can see it. The results speak for that. But I just have this feeling that there is some int- untang- intangibles going on that are not playing out well off the court, and you're seeing that impact on the court. And I, you don't know that. And a lot of that's I kind of do know that. And I think you'll see that. But, <laughs> but I think that every team has I that. I don't know all the I details, think every team but... has that in some way or another. Yeah. I don't think anything's perfect in that. We have a Facebook comment. I think okay. it's probably for you. Oh, no. So does that mean Michael Jordan is overrated, too? Yeah. Yep. 100%. What? So what, going back to what I said about the Beatles and Meryl Streep, by definition... You're not crazy to say that all of those people are overrated. You're insane. Because they might be the, <laughs> you are they might absolutely be the crazy. greatest of all time, but that means there's people that also don't like them that think they're overrated. Well, of course, someone's going to think they're overrated, but that doesn't mean they are. No one's perfect, so therefore everyone's capable of being overrated. <laughs> and Michael Jordan's the second greatest player of all time. LeBron's better than Jordan? Yeah. They go one-on-one. Who's, who are you taking? In their primes? Yep. But this past, the one thing about NBA, though, it's not, it's not, a, it's not yeah. a one-on-one sport. What if they played tennis? Who would you take? To, to right? Win? I mean, you put Will Chamberlain take, against any of these guys, they'd probably beat them one-on-one. <laughs> That's right. Right? Bill Russell is the yeah, best right? player of all time because he's got 11 titles. But guess what? This is a team game, and it's yeah. how you play inside a team. And they're both insane. I have... I have no problem saying that they're both the greatest of all time. Do you feel like Le- I feel like it's LeBron's stupid, done more I think it's with a less? Stupid argument. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's. I mean, I think it's. You could say that. I mean, LeBron winning in Cleveland with, with like some of the te- seasons he got to the playoffs and took him to the finals. Like we're going to the finals with Mo Williams as your point guard. Well, that's where people. That's crazy. People bring up <laughs> his losing finals record, and I'm like, look at him. He got to the finals with. Eric Snow as his point guard one year. He got the finals with Mo Williams, Mo Williams. <laughs> as his point guard. Sasha Pavlovich. Oh, my gosh. Some of those the teams jazz were so bad. In the, in the uh, uh, where franchise Jordan, where Jordan draft. Always, where Jordan always had Pippen. Yeah. Yep. Always had a Hall of Famer next to him. Rodman. And Rodman. Would, uh, he had Paxton. Is, he had Kerr. He had... Question now for you. Here's the... I don't think we have time for this argument, but... Armstrong. Is Pippen a Hall Horace of Famer Grant. without Jordan? No. Not without him. 
that's a that's a tough question too. Yep. But uh, anyway, we cup. got we got a little distracted there, but we do welcome the Facebook. And we're going to get into the next next week. We're going to have a really good conversation about because this is a huge telling week for the Jazz. This will. Tell I mean, us you look lot. at this schedule; yeah. it's going to be a big week. Even I think if the Jazz even get two and two through this, if, D- depending on how they I, play, I think yeah. you stop the bleeding. Depending if they're competitive. Yeah. Do you yeah. stop the off the court bleeding? I don't know, but you're getting yeah. closer to trade deadline too. Trade deadline is February 10th, so you're getting closer. Yep. Uh, let's talk a little uh, football. Utah. Here. The Utes hire two former players to replace Kyle McDonald and the surprising retirement of Sione Puha, the defensive oh. line coach. Uh, they hire Quinton Ganther, who's been uh, working up at Weber State for mm-hmm. many years. Former running back. He's going to be the new running backs coach. And Luther Ellis. The legend. My high school, he was, when I was in high school, he was the DN. DN like. yeah, it's too bad he went to the Lions. Yeah. Because he, uh, he was way better than beast in college. a lot of people know. In college, for sure. He's in the Utah Sports yeah. Hall of Fame for a reason. He probably could have been in the NFL football, Pro Football Hall of Fame, if he hadn't gone to Detroit. Probably. But that's just my And opinion. he's been doing a great job coaching. I mean, he's coached for many yeah. years. He's coached up at Idaho re- most recently. Correct. They were one of the top 20 teams in football in sacks. and 2.3 a game or yeah. something like that. I, mean, yeah. I, think, I think he's going to be a great hire. My, my only I, – I like former player hires. Yeah, that's my question. Do you like the idea of getting mm-hmm. former players? It's a little non-creative, isn't it? It's a little unimaginative to bring in – the former running back that's at Weber and the former defensive line legend that's at Idaho and just don't do a national search, just bring these but guys in of, immediately. I, but I think from the Utah standpoint, it's part of our culture and it's what's made it work, right? Same thing BYU yeah. does. It's the same is that they build it and it's how they build this culture of guys that are Utah through and through, the locker rooms after the game, doing your chance. And that, 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 it builds that camaraderie and teamwork Yeah, for sure. by having that guy. And then it, it teaches, it shows the players – that you're not just here for four years, yeah. right? I mean, you're telling your players that we're here for you after, that you're out there, that we want to bring you back. We want you part of our program longer than just your four years or three years that you're here. Yeah. Or seven years if you're Britton Covey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you also have examples of where it didn't He's going to be a great coach someday. Uh, yeah. I think Britton Covey will be a coach. If he Utah wants someday. to. I think Who he, knows what he'll yeah. do? I think he'll get drafted. I don't know if he'll get drafted. I think he'll have a gig. Someone's taking yeah. a flyer on him. Yeah. Somebody's going to take a flyer and see if they can make him that little slot receiver, Weck, Weckler, whatever the guy on New England's name was, Welker. Wes Welker. Yeah, that yeah. kind of player. This, the little, like, 5'10 guy. Edelman, yeah. Frankly, yeah, little 5'10 guy that can find all the seams and be a return guy. and He just has that natural talent. Yeah. I just don't think they'll use a pick on him, but I think he'll be in the NFL. That, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so. I think he makes a roster. Um, he makes an opening day roster. I give a little less leash to these former player coaches than the fan bases do. You have examples of where it failed miserably with like Ty, Ty Detmer at BYU and, yeah. and, and, and those sorts of things. Get but Ty Gary Detmer, but Ty Detmer didn't Utah have State. any college experience. That's true. Ty Detmer was a high school coach that they brought in to run a college offense. Gary Anderson, though, being rehired by Utah State was a disaster. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so it doesn't always work. I just have... I like former player hires because it's former players and it fits in and it's the culture you talked about. It just also seems a little like an easy choice. Yeah. But both these guys are massively qualified for those gigs. Yeah, was it? I mean, Ganther was an NFL he was. coach. Yep. Like, he was an NFL assistant coach. Yep. Uh, like with Miami, uh, Miami. Jacksonville. I want to say. This is Jacksonville. I think it was Jacksonville. I don't know. Well, yeah, he was with Weber. Then he went with Urban to Jacksonville, yeah, didn't he? I yeah, think so. Yeah, so. But, but I like that. I like the idea that you don't have to teach these guys the culture. Yep. Where a lot of coaches, assistants you bring in, and they have to find their way into the culture. They're in the culture already. It makes, I think, it a lot easier for these players to listen to them. And then we are running out of time, but let's just real quick tease this weekend. NFL. NFL playoffs. What do you think? My Titans. Your Titans. They are your Titans. Through and through, Austin is a Titan fan. That's He's not that's a front runner. Almost right. Yeah. Um. I was a 49ers fan. You got Henry back? Huh? Henry's back? Yep. Yeah. That's helpful. Back. That's very that's, helpful. That's why they needed that number one seed. Because <laughs> they to, needed yeah. that week. But they're playing the Bengals. The Bengals offense on, has been good. They are on upset. Jamar Chase. Watch. You got yeah. Mixon. You got Burrow. That's, that's a good football team. Yep. That's they are like my entire watch. fantasy football roster was like <laughs> Cincinnati. I still so, didn't win anything. So, but. sad. So, last weekend was ho-hum. I think this weekend you're going to be in for four great games. games. Chiefs Bills. Chiefs Bills on Sunday in Kansas City. Uh, that's Mahomes versus Allen. That's going to be a must-watch. 
You've uh, got the Packers, Buccaneers. Niners. You're going to do Bucks first. Bucks, hit Bucks, Rams. So Saturday it goes Titans, Bengals, Niners, uh, Green Bay. Am I right on that? Yeah, I like yeah. Niners, Green Bay too. Because what you yeah. get is you get, but you no, know, you get Aaron Rodgers revenge. You get revenge, yeah. Roger. But we've seen that already. I know, but he just loves to beat on the Niners. That's I think is going to be a 21 point victory. You for, think Green Bay Green wins Bay. it that big? Yeah. I do. Uh, And then Sunday brings you the Rams at at the Buccaneers. And the Rams look like a team of destiny. But the Buccaneers have the GOAT. They do have. At quarterback. The overrated. The overrated. He's overrated as well. Massively overrated. (laughs) So he's overrated too. Massively. This is our overrated episode of Give me Eli Manning every time over Tom Brady. Uh, And then, of course, KC and Buffalo. As a local. You gotta love. You gotta be cheering for the Rams with all those Utes on the team. Yeah, all right, yeah. Terrell Birds. You got Weddle coming out of retirement. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's so fun. So the NFL playoffs, I think, will be a lot better this this week than last. It'll no, I'm excited. We're gonna have four good games. It'll be fun to talk about them next week. Next week, we're hoping to have a former BYU uh, offensive lineman who is now in the NFL. He's coming to pick up a car today. He's gonna join us. Yeah, maybe we'll court we'll court a. Interview and bring it on next year. We'll get next we'll, week. Ne- next year. Next maybe. week. We'll save it. Yeah. That'd be a long time. It's <laughs> it still be. January. <laughs> and uh, what we said, this is the week uh, to tell us a lot about the Jazz. We got a lot to talk about next week. Lots to talk about. Any topics you want us to talk about, feel free to mention them on Twitter, put them out there, and we'll see what we can bring them up. If you think any of my arguments are stupid like Jeff did, let me know. Or any uh, movies you want us to watch. <laughs> any, oh, we'd uh, love that. Yeah, yeah, any movies you want us to watch. We're always up for movie suggestions. For Jeff Miller. Our team behind the scenes, Mike Aguilar, Josh Goldsmith, Joseph Dane, Megan Stenquist in the room this week. Everyone making us feel and look a lot better than we should. I'm Austin Horton. We'll be back in one week's time on Sports Wheels and Reels. And wait, Utah by five. Trust me. There we go.